Hey, welcome in. This is Lachlan from Nerds of the West, and I've got Sean here. We've just played through a round or three rounds of uh, Sky Great Team, team. the Spiel des Jahres winner of 2024. 2024. Oh, 2024? Yeah, I think it done, it's done in different years. So ah, it's 2024. So what, Came out last year, won this year because it wins in the middle of the year. I think it works like billboards where songs come out at the end of the year, but no one plays them until the next following ah, year. Okay, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Um, but yeah, because what did what won last year? What won last year? Anyway, we're gonna do a <laughs> review of Sky Team. Don't yep. worry about it. If you missed our playthrough, you can catch us uh, on the channel on here on YouTube. Uh, otherwise, you can join us when we stream live every Saturday. Uh, we stream live, and then we get to do the review. We did some now pretty. Yeah, we had some pretty good games. We just completed three different games of different levels of difficulty. So pretty pretty proud of us. Fantastic game. Yep. Absolutely fantastic game. So I think to answer your question. Uh, yeah. Dorf Romantic won last year. Uh, 2023? Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yes. See, I was right. I was like, I sh feel like I should know what won. That was Reese, our disembodied uh, intern. Hello. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's jump into it. Let's get into the review. Yep. Uh, I've got some thoughts. Uh -huh. I think you've got some thoughts. And let's get out board. We rank our games not on what we is better than one another or what is objectively better or worse. We rank it on what we'd rather play. You can't compare apples and oranges, so we can only say we'd rather play this over that. And so we put it onto our ranking board, which Sean's going to grab out for us. Yep. And we're going to put it on the board very do we, soon. Do we want to talk about it first? Then we'll grab Let's it. talk about it. Let's, let's talk it. about what we've got in front of us because right. it is an absolutely gorgeous game. Yep. Uh, let's let's have this come back out here. Nice. So, I want to talk about just how it looks first of all. The presence that it has on the table, mm. I love it. I think it's great being so small, um, compact. I mean, it's not the smallest box by any means, like, mm -hmm. but it's still, in my opinion, a very much travel game. Like, even though it has a few little fiddly pieces, if you were jumping on. A plane, maybe, if you wanted to. Maybe, probably a little <laughs> bit big for a plane, but maybe a train or, you know, just taking it on a road trip or something like that. It's mm -hmm. not that big to, to take around. Um, so I like the form factor, um, and I think everything on it is nice and easy. Super super clear, easy iconography, good colours, orange, blue. Yeah, yeah. very like very easy to see who's who, what's what, and it's got some really interesting pieces as well. So hmm. other than your standard dice, it's got these awesome little uh, planes, so little plane meeples. These are absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, I don't think any other game actually uses these plane meeples. They're, they're, they're adorable, yep. absolutely adorable. Uh, and not only that, the actual game board has punched out insert pieces, which you don't see in a lot of games. So the dice fit in, they have a good spot. Super There's nice. just the design yep. along with the art works out perfectly and yeah, a I, piece like this that you use to control the role of your plane. That's a whole integral mechanic of the game, which I mm. think is just really neat. Super tactile game for like all the components. It's nice when you get a yeah, game that yeah. has really nice components and yeah, exactly like just switches. sliding these things over. Yeah. Like it feels great to play just from that point of view. The little coffee cups are fantastic as well. It could have just been a flat board for all sakes and purpose and then the dice just go on their spots. But the fact that they have a spot they go into, the little uh, switches you actually move left and right. Maybe if these were little cubes so they're a little bit like higher. And Easier to do. To yeah. move. But it still gets that idea across that you're actually ticking something off your list and you've got to move it down. And then also the incorporation of the landing, your altitude and your distance away, mm. where it slides in for your round. Everything, I don't think I've seen a better game that incorporates all the components like this does. Maybe one or two where they use the box as a component for it, but otherwise, this game, art and components is like, knocks it out of the park. Oh, I couldn't say anything better about the components and how they function in the game. Yeah, yeah, and it really invokes the thing. Like, you feel like you're landing a plane, um, which I just love, like, it's yeah. great. Yeah, exactly. You've got, like, all the knobs, and if you're a, a captain or a pilot, you're, like, turning all the knobs and all the buttons and the dials, and, like, yeah, your role is, you know, similar to if you're actually like steering the plane. And it's interesting to see how board games have taken such a unique and interesting uh, concept. I don't think anyone really expected a 
plane landing game. To and win? Like, to, well, to be honest, not, not like, even to win. Like, everything else is fantasy, it's sci-fi. True. And this is very grounded. Yeah, it's like... And it's like, you're landing a plane. Have you ever wanted to be a pilot? I mean, yeah, everyone's kind of thought about it. What do you want to be when you grow up? A pilot, an astronaut, that sort of thing? True. But... And, like, you think about it, like, you think of video <laughs> games, just quickly on that, because I want to get to the gameplay part of it and talk about some of the mechanics, but the when you play video games and you're playing flying games, what's the funnest part? Taking off and actually flying. The worst part is landing because <laughs> it's the most boring part. But this whole game is around landing and it just does it so well. It's just so fun. Like, and, mm -hmm. yeah, you can envision yourself at the cockpit having to deal with, you know, calling up radio towers and all that sort of stuff is great. Yeah. For such a simple game and being that it's a two-player game is fantastic, um, it's really stressful and the degrees of difficulty the replay value in this game is absolutely phenomenal so mm -hmm. we played three games on our stream we played two easy games we played the intro game which really in uh showcases how what you need to do but then when you get to another airport each airport is sort of double-sided it's got a um typically like an easier and a harder side with more um mm -hmm. different bolt-ons like you can add different uh, modules to the game so stuff like the we were at the moment we've got on the board the intern where you've got to basically use the dice and that's the mechanic of game i quickly want to touch on is that you're rolling dice getting the the numbers and then having to plug them into spots to do various mm -hmm. actions um but you use the intern to basically level him up and make sure you're fully using him by the time you land but then other ones are like having to deal with wind direction having to deal with fuel levels mm -hmm. heaps of stuff there's yeah. tons and tons and like even the landing strips of how far out you are so like Heathrow is really short in comparison to Different some of the ones. other ones so you've got to really manage your speed but then also have like tons and tons of planes mm. on the actual uh spots ahead of you so this particular round is going to mean that you're calling up a lot more but you're trying to be slow whereas another one might be a longer um route so you've got to really worry about going faster. And then there's ones where there's clouds and you've got to make sure that your plane is pitched a particular way when you're going through so a checkpoint. clouds and stuff, it's crazy. It's Honestly, there's each thing offers something else. They're double-sided, there's so many planes, there's so many different bolt-ons. This game is fantastic. And the fact that it's only two players, 20 minutes is all you need for yeah. someone to play it. Honestly, this is a standout game. Yeah. And then throwing in there, you're not allowed to talk about the dice um, before. As soon as you roll the dice, no talking between the two players. You mm -hmm. have to work out what you guys are trying to do silently. Um, but beforehand, before you roll the dice, you can talk about like what you want to try and achieve. Like mm -hmm. For instance, there are a couple of spots on the board that are mandatory. So you've got the engines, how fast you go, so how fast you progress towards the airport. And then you also have roll, making sure you keep it nice and level. Because if you get all wonky and do a barrel roll, your uh, your employer and your passengers aren't going to like it. <laughs> this is commercial flight <laughs> as opposed to uh, uh, a fighter plane. <laughs> yeah. But then you also, by the end of it and having to land, you have to manage your flaps and your landing gear and get all those down and, and mm -hmm. set. So And you've only got four dice to do it. Like yeah, each of you have only got so four dice. So two of the dice have to go in engines <laughs> and that, and you only have two other dice to use for each of the rounds. And there's seven rounds in a, in a game. So, yeah, it's a really good management game that I think gives you mm -hmm. enough leeway to manipulate the dice with the coffee and anything else. It's such a simple concept. It's yeah. so simple, but it is like everything just gets harder or easier yeah. or the roles are what changes it. The only thing I could equate to this to be is I'm surprised <laughs> that it wasn't a card trick taking game mm. because it's exactly that. You put your die down on the engine and you're like, I need you to do something because you can't talk about the no. dice. You have to just lead. And each round, it's either the pilot goes first or the co-pilot goes first. And so you've got to lead and put yours down and go, well, I'll raise you this. And you've got to uh, li put something down that matches, which is going to benefit both of us. Yeah. Um, and the only way you can really manipulate the dice is by using the coffee or the interns, for example. 
Yeah. Um, that whole leading thing is is great for me because, yeah, you have your dice, you're looking at what you can see, you can't see your opponent's dice, and then you go, cool, I want them to put their dice down first in this spot so I know what they have, and then I can use my dice in a certain way. But they might be thinking the exact same thing about you in the exact same spot. So you're kind of like in this standoff, like, oh, you go first, no, or you go first, and then you get stuck with one dice each to the end and you just have to plug them in because you've got no coffee, you've got nothing else, and then you're stuck with what you've got and then you might either spin out and crash or you might get through. You never know. Yeah, exactly. And, hey, if you do happen to crash, then no stress. You can always reset and go again. Oh, super, super simple. simple. Yeah. Turn your dials back, take your dice out, and you are ready to start around again. So even if you were to have a, a handful of goes at the hardest rounds, it's really good. And you do get better with your co-pilot and your pilot to figure out what you need to put into the actual spots. Mm. Shall we rank it? Let's rank it. Right. Let's put it on the board. Right, okay. I am very keen to see. Got the board here. Is it in? It's in, it's on, cool. it's there. It's beautiful. Hopefully. I don't think it's going down the bottom, so I don't think we need to see anything down there. Yep. Um, this is that? our board. Uh, we like to rank games against each other as opposed to giving it a score 1 or 10. Yep. Um, what would you rather play? Would you rather play a heavy Euro? Would you rather play a card uh, game? This is where we'd like to play it against other things, not if one is uh, better than the other. Um, Sean, what where do you feel? I think it goes. Yeah, From so, what we've played in this year, where do you think it belongs on this board? And do remember that we do rank this all again at the end of the year. We go through and re-rank all of our games uh, because when we put them on the board, the, it's ever-growing. And mm -hmm. we see that there are other games that are going to end up on the board and things will shuffle and change. And, you know, if you play a game again, you're going to have a different opinion of it the second time, the third time, the fourth time. Some games have better replay value than other games. Yeah. I think I'm going to place it pretty mm -hmm. high. I think I'm going to go between Guildmaster mm -hmm. and Archaeos Society. I think I like Archaeos Society for the more people aspects. While I, I love to play games, I love solo games. So, you know, player count's not too much of a big thing for me. The extra player count for Archaeos Society is just a bit more fun, a little bit more people. Mm -hmm. um, so, but because of how quick this is, it's a solid second on, on our board. So, mm. yeah, that's where I'd chuck it. Honestly, Archaea Society is a fantastic game. I love Archaea Society. Archaea Society is a four-player game. Uh, I was trying to see what other two-player games we've played this year because I think that, unlike other years, previous years we had, like, quite a few two-player games that we had played. This year mm. I think everything's looking like four is... Four is the normal yeah. number, and it's nice to see a two-player game um, because sometimes you don't have four people and you want to just be able to whip something out and play with just two uh, instead of trying to round up uh, <laughs> those extra people. Um, I think as much as I love Arcade Society and it is really enjoyable, I think I'm going to put Sky Team above it. I think the replay value, what it tries to do, the concept for the game, everything is really satisfying. And the fact that you can just reset, go again, try and improve, there's so much variety with what you can do. I think I'm going to put mine above Archie Society. Uh -huh. Well, that puts it pretty much even with Archie Society. So what do you want to do? Flip a coin. Roll a die. <laughs> Good roll a die. Let's do it. Roll a black die. All right. So one to three is below, and five, uh, four to six is above. Yep. Well, it's, oh, it's above. <laughs> <laughs> Roll to five. So, Gain the lead. Sorry yes. about Gain that. Gain the lead. We so, have. Just trying to make sure the chat can see, but it's a bit hard. I'm really sorry, guys. No, nah, you probably can't see oh, it. Oh, there you go. That's, you can yeah, see it. On. I got you. Oh, there Reese, you go. Into oh, Reese. Yep. So, as you can see, it's nice on the top there, just above Archaea Society, um, just so you guys can see where it sat and where the rest of the games are on the board there. Um, but, yeah, I think I think that's everything said. Board of <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. Thank you guys very much for joining us. Uh, if you like the content here, you can subscribe on YouTube. You can follow us on Twitch. And we also have merch on our website that you can support us. And we also have a Patreon so you can buy us a coffee. Because yep. we all know we need one after that 
game. Uh, <laughs> I'm feeling like a coffee. How about a triple espresso? <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, we will catch you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>